Um, but God is always reaching out because he has a heart of love, a heart of compassion. And, you know, I just want to thank the apostle and his dear wife for the care they've had for both Ruth and I and the encouragement, uh, and we needed it. And you need someone to lift you up. What you don't need is someone to say, well, I wonder what you've done wrong that this happened to you. Um, the only reason any man's sick, and there's only one reason under the sun why a man is sick, and that's because he's not well. Because if he was well, he wouldn't be sick. Uh, I hate it when people come with, uh, you know, their stupidities of trying to um, blame people and condemn people. My Jesus took everything. Amen? Um, but I just wanted to let you all know that the apostles being to my wife and I a real strength in our time of need. So here he is. Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, I feel flattered by that. I, I am so sorry that we got here quite very late. We've been on the road now for close to two hours, just from New Cross. We went through Rudrite Tunnel, and we discovered when we got to the tunnel, it was blocked. So we had to go right through Round Back to go through um, Blackwater Tunnel. And then Blackwater Tunnel was blocked. You know, we couldn't come out into 813. So we had to walk our way through the um, A12 to come through 406 to get here. But anyway, we are here. And I'm so blessed by what I was hearing. I wanted to hear more from Pastor. But it happened also that God is saying the same thing. And um, I will come back to share with you. The last time I was with you, I shared from the book of Hebrew chapter 11, which talks about faith. And I spoke to you how God expects us to have full confidence in him. How God wants us to just believe the truth. And over the period since I came to you, God told me that a lot of Christians are living in the realm of facts. And fact is different from faith. Faith is based on the truth. But fact is based on human intellect. And we have been looking at a lot of facts that are not true. If you look at it, it's a fact that we can be sick. But the truth is that we were healed by his right. And the doctor can diagnose us is a fact. But the truth is that even having the doctor said there is no way. We have seen many people doctor give three years to live by fact. But they are still alive and the doctor who gave them three years has died. And so God was sent to me to tell his people the time has come for us to get away from the place of fact and begin to live our life according to the written word, the truth. Let me say this to you. All the errors that is propagated in the church came because some human beings felt that this is what the Bible is saying. They felt that this is what the Bible is saying. And so they came about derivatives that is based on facts. And most of those derivatives are based on the experiences of people. But God is saying that he wants us to look at the perfect law of God, the word of God. And any aspect of your life that you are living a, a, a life based on fact, God wants you to change and live your life based on truth. Just like what Pastor was saying and Bishop, and people have situations in life, and people have all manners of reasons why they say they do have it. But I want to show you something God shared with us this morning briefly, and you can go and work on that. In the book of the same Hebrew 11, it says in verse 32, I read the King James Version here now, it says, and what shall I must say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of prof prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lion. These people. But look at verse 34. Quench the violent fire Escape the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong. All right? Turn to the flight and army at uh, the armies of the aliens. So the Bible tells us here about these great heroes of faith. How true the word of God, which is truth, faith in the word, they conquered nations, they 
did great wonders like David tore the lion apart, you know, opened the mouth of the lion, brought out the sheep from it, you know, um, you know, people who went through fire and the flames of fire never burned them, and people like Gideon and Samson. But let me say something to you. The Lord told me that the last verse says, whose weakness is worse than to strength. That is what the NIV says it in verse 34. These people were people of weaknesses. Consider Samson. God appeared to Samson and said, Samson, you know, go in this strength of yours and take over the, uh, you know, subdue the, the Midianites. And Samson has several reasons why God was wrong. He told God every reason why God made a mistake because Samson, uh, Gideon I'm talking about, Gideon in chapter 6 and chapter 7 of uh, Judges. And he said to God, that, look God, I'm the weakest of all men. I'm the most unworthy of all men. The Midianites, are, uh, he spoke about all the past he knew, how much they failed, how much the devil had done again and again in the past. But recognizing that it's in the, it's in the presence of God. And God said, look, uh, 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 Gideon, have not said all this? Go in this strength of yours. Am I not sending you? Now, it is amazing that God used a man who didn't believe in himself. It is amazing that God used a man who is so fearful. It is amazing that God still found something good in a man who felt he isn't good. If you look at Samson, Samson was a man who did so much great things. He was, he was, he was though physically not muscular, but when the power of God operated through him, he did incredible things. But then Samson ended up his life doing the greatest than former. But do you know that Samson fell? And when Samson fell, why would God call a man like Samson who fell a hero of faith? Do you know why? i tell you in a minute. What about David? David did so many things. He wrote the scripture, the book of Psalm 1. You know, blessed is the man who walks on the counsel of the wicked, and who uh, uh, stands in the way of sinners, or sins, sins of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In the law of the Lord, he may sit day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the riverside. He wrote scriptures, you know, um, that the Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make up thy enemies the full soul of thy faith. This is a man who wrote so many powerful scriptures, Psalms. But yet, you know, he fell one day just by, you know, encounter. He, the, the others were in the war. He was at home. And before he knew himself, he had fallen into sin to the extent that he arranged that Uriah should be killed while he took his wife. But why should God call a man like, like David a hero of faith? You know, the, 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 the underlying factor of those guys is this. Samson fell, but he repented. And when he repented, God restored him, and he did greater works than the, the former. David fell as a human, but when David was told by Nathan that, look, this is what you have done, what did David do? He left his throne, and he went to the floor, and he pleaded before God. He repented. And that's where he wrote the book of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God. I come to that steadfast Lord and to that the step of mercy. And then he said, do not take the Holy Spirit from me. But then because he repented, God restored him. And yet, with the life of David, are you not amazed that he is the only human being? God allowed his name to be defined as a reference to David. Jesus, the son of David. He didn't say Jesus, son of Abraham. He didn't say Jesus is son of Enoch, but Jesus is son of David. Now, there's something the Lord told me to tell the church in London today, in the Southeast today, when I told them emphatically. Do you know that God does not, is not, God is not hindered by your mistakes? Do you know that God is not hindered by all your past? Do you know that whatever your past is has nothing to do with what God intends to do with you? Do you know that God wants us to come before him and recognize we are mortal men? Do you know that God wants us to be truthful? If I blow it up, I tell God I'm sorry. This is what I did to myself. I wouldn't blame the devil for what I did wrong to God. But at the same time, I go to God and say, God, look, this is me. I'm naked. 
And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When Israel sinned in chapter 6 of Judges, the Bible says God sold them to the Midianite. But after a while, the Bible says they cried to the Lord. And the Lord sent them a prophet and raised uh, uh, Gideon for them. So God said, I should let your, his people know this. Know this for fact. When God created you and he ordained you to do what you are doing, it is his deci decision to do so. Not because you are a good boy or a good girl. Are you getting me now? And so as, as far as God is concerned, he's calling upon your life. His mandate for you, his plan for your life, and his purpose for your life stands. I've seen a good number of Christians who had conditions like they were sick or like they, they have some uh, struggle with the devil. And people have several reasons why that happened to them. And so they recommend deliverance. They tell them that somebody has to go and pray for them to break the curse and to break that. But I know what my uh, what. Uh, my God says in the scriptures, in the book of uh, Romans chapter, chapter 4, verse 7, he said, blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is the man whose sins, iniquities, the Lord will never count against him. If the Bible says God will never count my sins against me, so which means they are four, I can never be cursed. Hey, excuse me, curses come because of sin. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, and the Bible says, whosoever repents of his sins, God is faithful and just. To forgive. And if the Bible says God has forgiven him of my sins, and that scripture says, Blessed is the one who sins the Lord will never count against him. So if God never counts a sin against you, your own sin against you, can he count the sin of your father against you or the sins of your grandfathers against you? So that theory is wrong, utterly wrong and utterly lie. Someone like myself, my father was the, one of the most wicked human beings that ever lived on planet earth. Why am I preaching the gospel? Why is, it, why is God answering me? Who delivered me? Jesus. Who delivered my father? Jesus. He says, if the son therefore make you free, you are free indeed. Now listen to me, therefore. Most of us have based our reasoning on facts because they are phenomena that came from men. But God is calling the church today to get out of it. If anything happens to you, don't blame anything for it. The only thing you need to do is to look up unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He who was flesh like us and who understood what flesh is. He who, when everybody condemns you, he still accepts you. If you can turn to him and say, Dad, I'm sorry. He who, when he receives you back home, he never hinders you from all that he has for you. And this is what God is saying. If God can call all these men who have their own fallibility, heroes of faith. You know what? Look at the last chapter of that Hebrew, and I will keep my mouth shut. Look at what he says in the last chapter of Hebrew. I read from 39. He says, All these are all all these and all these having obtained good report through faith. Alright? <laughs> not through deeds. Receive not the promise. God having provided some better things for us, that they without us shall not be made perfect. Let me read the NIV to you. It says, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what they had, what had been, had been promised. Verse 40 says, God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. So you understand that all the miracles and the manifestation of the heroes of faith is not perfect. God is waiting for your miracle. God is waiting for your manifestation. All these heroes of faith in heaven, when they look at us, they are looking at us with eager expectation for our manifestation. If by faith God counted their works as righteous, if by faith God overlooked all their errors and their mistakes and still perfected them in miraculous, in power, listen to me, don't let the devil accuse you any longer. Don't let the devil tell you how weak you are. Don't let the devil tell you how unqualified you are. Don't let him tell you how much you don't believe in yourself. Moses never believed in himself. Gideon never believed in himself. But by faith, they conquered kingdoms. Are you with me now? So God is saying to you from this hour, stop leaning on the wisdom 
of men. Whatever God promises you is yours for free. Remember G John chapter 1 verse um, 16. It says, from the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. And verse 17 says, for law came by Moses, but uh, um, grace and truth came through Jesus. So anytime you walk by the truth, which is the written word, there is a grace attached to it. Anytime you deviate from the truth and follow what many people are saying, you lose the grace. So be encouraged you are in the month of June. This is a better time to live. This is a better year to live under heaven because we are living in a time of great supernatural miracles that is awaiting us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for the Lord. Let me pray with them. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Do you know something? Don't worry. S keep, keep yourself seated. Do you know something? Let me tell you this confidently. The Lord Jesus revealed to me about revival that has started this year. And the Lord showed me as the ripple goes on, as we go into four-year time. And the Lord showed me what he had made available. I think I must have seen a part of it. But let me give you this confidence before I pray with you. You know, when Jesus was to come to the earth, angels came to announce his coming. Okay? Then he was conceived. While he was born, angels came to confirm that he has been born. It would mean uh, when he started his ministry, angels were with him in that wilderness to minister unto him and confirm and while jesus was in gethsemane his last night angels came to strengthen him now when he died for him to resurrect angel came to bear witness matthew 28 and the angel was standing the bible says the appearance of the angel was like flashing of lightning to the extent that the manifestation of the angel caused all the Soldiers who believe Jesus will never resurrect to fall and be slain. And Jesus came out of the grave. The angel rolled the stone away and sat on it. Now when Jesus was ascending, then angels came again and said to the disciples that this same Jesus that you have seen going up in this way, you will see him come down in the same way. And so the Lord said to me, therefore, that in this year I should alert his people because his coming is short. Guess what? He had released numerous angels. So many angels. You are going to be seeing angelic encounters more than you had ever seen in the church. You are going to be seeing the manifestation of angels that will shock you. Because if angels play such a role along Christ's life, and angels announce concerning his coming, and the Bible says that for Jesus to appear on earth, the archangel will blast the trumpet. But before the archangel blasts the trumpet, an angel, the angels of God have been sent to the world to announce his coming. And they are the ones that will begin to change the message you hear on your television screen now. All the messages of, uh, of need-mindedness, need-mindedness that enslave people looking for prayer when God wants to hear your voice. All those messages will die on television. All the messages of selling clothes, selling tulip, selling water, selling oil, all those messages will be wiped away. Everything based on falsehood will be done away with. Because the angels are on action, he wants to hear the voice of his people, God. He wants to hear your voice directly, not through somebody. He wants your confidence in him, not in somebody. He wants though that he has sent to point you to he who is the author and the finisher of your faith. I never die for you. Bishop never die for you. Pastor never die for you. There is one who died for you. And we are messengers to let you know that this is the one who died for you. And remove the veil so that you can approach him with all confidence. And let you know this is the promise he made for you. All these that you have been hearing are false. We may not seem popular. But we are now popular because the angels who know us, they are all here on earth to work with us. And because God has given such a blessing of angels in this time, things is going to get easier for you. I tell you, things are going to get easier. You watch it. Many things you have been struggling to attain and it's been 
as if it's running far away from you. This is the month of June. You watch what's going to happen to you. Let me pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that is here. You said in the, in the scripture, in the book of 1 John, from chapter 5 and verse 14, you said this is the confidence we have in approaching him, that if we ask him, we know that he hears us. And the next verse you said, we know that he hears us if we ask according to the will, in accordance to the word. And then we know that he hears us concerning anything that we ask of him. And so the confidence we have in you is that you are a father who hears your children. The Bible further says in the same scripture, verse 4, Whatsoever is born of God overcome the earth, or whosoever is born of God overcome the world. This, are victory, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith in you. So, Lord, I pray for these people. As a messenger of God, most I declare, it shall come to pass as you leave this place today. From the dawn of tomorrow, you will begin to encounter the power of God in a dimension that you had never seen before. The Lord will open the floodgate of mercy over you in keeping with his word. Because... By the fullness of him, we have all received one blessing and then the other. Verse 16 of John 1. Because the Lord came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Christ. And so because you have believed in the truth, receive all the grace that you need in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray there are some spirits of hell that are sent to hinder people from serving you. They hinder us by several ways. Some of the ways is by, by speaking into our mind things that are not correct and things that does not come from you. They hinder us sometimes by whispering to us when we ought to pray that you don't need to pray. And whenever we make our mind to pray, we get so weak and tired. We can read all the papers, but when we want to read the Bible, we don't know where to start from. All those stuff came from the pits of hell. And so, Lord, I ask for strength for your people from today in the name of Jesus that we will respond to your cry, Holy Spirit. When you say pray, we shall, we shall pray. When you say study, we shall study. Father, we shall rise up in the strength that you have given to us and begin to walk in the righteous part of God in faith in you who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And Father, Lord, if there everyone that is sick here, to be sick is a fact, but to be healed is the truth. I speak to infirmity and sicknesses, you are done away with in the name of Jesus. Every pain, I curse you to die from your roots. Every organ that I've been afflicted, I decree, receive brand new organs in the name of Jesus. Brand new sight, brand new kidney, brand new liver. Your lymphatic system is made whole. Your blood system is made whole in the name of Jesus. Brand new pancreas, brand new womb, brand new oviducts. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Every pain in your joints, I command them to vanish in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. King of heaven, let God be true. Let all man be liar. Finally, it is written, Isaiah 14, 24. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I plan it shall be, as I purpose it will stand. So Lord, as these people go away this week, before the end of this week, and we shall meet together here by next Sunday, I declare that Lord, you will take everyone from where they are, and bring them to where they ought to be. Everything that is operating around you, that is contrary to the plans of God, we command their closure in the name of Jesus. Everything that has been working around you, the Bible says that uh, in all things God is working. I decree that God will use everything around you to work for his purpose. Even if the manifestation seems as if is against God's purpose, by the reason of the word of truth, they will work to the, to the purpose of God. Your life shall be filled with the manifestation of his truth. Someone that has been sunk in debts, I decree that the doors, the, the gates of prosperity, the doors of favor, such favor that will, that will take off your debt will open to you in the name of Jesus. In this week, 
you will find favor before heaven in this week you will find favor before god in this week the lord will open the doors for you that you will be able to have enough to pay off all your debts father we bless your name we thank you lord we glorify and honor thee in jesus holy name we are praying put your hands together for the lord